Okay, so my Photoshop crashed, and now I've got to start over just a little bit, but it's not too bad. Uh, all it did was, of course, get rid of the little square that I had up there. That's something that actually I decided to keep in this video because I wanted to emphasize the importance of saving often. We'll get into saving in just a second, but for the moment, I'm going to show you the clone tool. So if I try to click on the clone tool, it gives me this weird little pop-up. Could not use the clone stamp because the area to clone has not been defined. Option click to define a source point. Okay, well what that means is that I need to hold down option. And you'll notice that when I do that, it turns it into weird little crosshairs, like a target. I'm going to click, then I'm going to release. I'm going to move my mouse a little and click. Notice, look, there's a little circle. Well, basically what the clone tool does is allow you to make a copy of an area based on where that crosshair is. So, see how the crosshair is over that kind of stripe in the logo? And the circle, then, because I'm holding down and moving the mouse, is making a copy of that. This is really good for fixing uh, problems that you may encounter in images. Say you have an imperfection that you want to get rid of, you can kind of use that. In the same concept, though, as the brush tool, you can select a different brush. Sometimes the softer brushes are nicer because they provide more of a um, transition. For instance, I can use that soft brush there. You'll notice how it's doing fun things to the, the logo. I'm going to skip over this tool, which you won't really use. Here is the eraser tool, which does exactly as you think it would. It erases things. Very exciting. Notice, however, that I did unlock this again. If I hadn't, then I would have just swapped in a background color as opposed to being transparent. The paint bucket tool. Very exciting just drops in the color that you have here. So for instance, say I wanted a nice purple, I drop in purple. Let me jump down all the way to the zoom tool because this is something you'll probably use very frequently. This allows you to zoom in, hence the name. We can actually click and it will zoom in. Click again, click again, keep zooming in. I can hold down the Alt button and you'll notice how it changes it to a little minus sign or I can click up here. I'm just used to using the keyboard shortcuts and then it will zoom out. You'll notice that we have 50% here. That means that I've zoomed out and we're to a 50% mark. We can, if we want to see it at its actual size, we double click on the zoom tool and you'll notice that it says 100% right there. The only annoying thing is that on a big screen like what I have here on, on the Mac anyway, it always resizes the entire um, image layout which bugs me. Okay, so that's the basics. Next we're going to get into how to save. So say I want to save this image and say I have a bunch of layers on it. So I'm going to draw some layers just so we can kind of be clear. You would go up to File, Save As. So you want to save this as a Photoshop format. Now if you've been saving as other things, sometimes it'll come up as whatever it was you last saved at, like you may use a PDF but for the most part, you're going to want to use the Photoshop format. This includes all the layers. It can get to a very large file size. This is not the format you would ever want to upload to a website. If someone does not have Photoshop, they couldn't see the image. We'll get into that in just a moment. So you always want to save it as the .psd. This maintains your layers. So I'm just going to save mine to the desktop and click Save. You would put it in a folder of your choice, of course. Now, the other option that I have is Save for Web. That saves it in a format that can be viewed on a web browser. File, Save for Web and Devices. And it gives you a preview of how big it's going to look and the quality. The quality settings is something we're going to get into at a later date. Um, but for right now, we have JPEG. I usually set mine at 86%. We'll notice if we take the quality down, that the quality of this image goes down significantly. That's artifacting caused by compressing the image. The file size will be smaller, but the image will look a lot uglier. I found for the most part, I like 86. That's about the threshold of when you really start to notice um, things. You, your mileage may vary. So here I have JPEG. You can save it as a GIF, which I don't recommend. That's only 256 colors, kind of old school. That's cool, but not what we want. And PNG we'll get into later. So I'm gonna save this as a JPEG. I say save. And then it will, if I've already saved it as a PSD, it'll usually give me the same name, .jpg, and I can click Save. 